Now, after more than seven years of being grounded, Palestinian Airlines is flying again. But with few destinations and restrictions on who can use it, its services are severely limited. So is this about creating a profitable business or more about a symbol of statehood? Howard Johnson reports from Gaza. They may be flying again, but Palestinian Airlines is still a long way from bringing its business home. In May this year, the airline began a twice-weekly service, flying between Arish in Egypt and Jordan's capital, Amman, the result of the relaxing of border controls between Gaza and its southern neighbour. But it's a far cry from the company's glory days. In the late 1990s, it flew tens of thousands of passengers from Gaza to Middle Eastern destinations. But the business ground to a halt following the second uprising against the Israeli occupation. Palestinian Airlines once operated from here, Yasser Arafat Airport in southern Gaza. But in 2001, an Israeli airstrike destroyed the airport. And since then, the company's operations have had a complicated geography. Israel won't allow Gaza to reopen its airport because of security concerns. So for Gazans, the alternative used to be Cairo Airport, around 350 kilometers away. But Palestinian Airlines offers a closer alternative. Customers must cross the Rafa border into Egypt and then on to Arish, roughly a fifth of the distance to Cairo. Planes then fly outside of Israeli airspace to Amman in Jordan, where passengers can connect to other international carriers. But despite the logistical headaches for Palestinian Airlines staff and customers in Gaza, the resumption of business has been warmly welcomed. The clients are very happy with Palestinian Airlines and its service, even though it is quite basic compared to the competition. But they feel at ease because they've been dreaming of an airline since the closure of Gaza International Airport. It's good for them now that they can use Arish Airport and they're hoping that there will be more destinations. And if flying with the airline isn't complicated enough, spare a thought for Director General Zayed al Badr. Although the vast majority of his customers are based in Hamas-controlled Gaza, the Palestinian Authority's own business is based in the West Bank, with movement between the two territories severely restricted. Too much suffering also in the, in the border to checkpoint and to check your uh, thing. Uh, it takes you more than five to six hours to reach Jordan. This is in the easiest way. So the, all the Palestinians are dreaming to have their own airport. So that to get rid of all the difficulties they face. Captain al Bada insists the company is profitable. But with rising fuel prices and convoluted routes, is the business sustainable? Uh, for an airline, fuel is one third of their cost. So if your fuel cost goes up, not only does your, you know, if your distance goes up, not only does your time for the journey to go up, but your fuel costs go up dramatically. So this, this um, militates against the uh, possibility of setting up um, a, a, commercial, a, a commercially successful organization. But profit margins aside, for Palestinians dreaming of a nation state, the return of their own carrier is a potent symbol that that hope is very much still alive. Howard Johnson reporting from Gaza there. Right, we're going to take a short break now. When we come back, smeltering success, how Gulf aluminium is giving others a run for their money.